Hi, my name is Kaylee Messer. I decided to do this project for the teaching assignment on combat veterans and post-traumatic stress disorder, which is very important to me. Um, I work on a medical surgical floor, so we actually take care of a lot of these patients, and we've actually had to de-escalate these patients in the middle of the night, hour at midnight shift, so we've had quite a few of these patients that if a fire alarm or some kind of drill or a pump goes off, we've had quite a few of these that we've had to de-escalate. Here's my Shapola badge. Okay. So, for the beginning of my assignment, my goal, my overall goal was mainly just that whoever I'm teaching will understand not only what PTSD is, but how it affects combat veterans and what they can do to help these people. That's probably the hardest part in nursing so far is trying to figure out how to help them because a lot of them once they get in these panic phases it's hard to get them out and they become not only a threat to themselves but also to us as well as other patients whenever they come out of their rooms. Um, for my objectives I have three different ones with them being the students will demonstrate comprehension of PTSD, students will demonstrate knowledge of prevalence rates of PTSD, and they will be able to describe beneficial therapies as well as their effects on these combat veterans. I have a piece of paper here just making I'm not miss making sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. So to present my material to my class and when I'm discussing this population, I always like to start it out with discussing their experiences and just like I would do in the hospital whenever I talk to a patient, especially um, an older patient or a pediatric patient or somebody who doesn't show a lot of trust. Um, I like to start out with how we're going to relate to it. So for the class, I would like them to tell me, you know, what experiences they have with combat veterans and PTSD and what they know about it. And from there, we can kind of channel what we need to know. So for my methodology, for teaching all the methods I use. Um, first I would go into kind of explaining of course what PTSD is. Then after we explain what PTSD is, talk about the prevalence of it, what goes on in the military, what causes it, the, the different treatments, things like that. Um, I think it's important for students to know not only you know, the med medical treatments where as nurses we're usually jumping to medications or doctors a lot are, but a lot of times there's just therapies that we can do without just giving drugs immediately to treat these patients. For whenever we have cultural values and beliefs, this is a lot we run into when we're talking about the military or any political agendas. Um, I think it's important to make sure that students understand that they're allowed to express their opinions and they're allowed to make sure that whatever group they want represented needs to be represented in the class. So although my study focuses mostly on the combat veterans here in America, we might have students from other countries that see combat veterans in their countries. and they might want to add their input and I think it's important for students to be able to add their input and tell us about things that they see in their country as well as ours for those of us who have not been to foreign countries and seen those. Um, also, the for languages, we don't come across a whole lot of language barriers when we're trying to teach but in the event that we did, I think it's important to have translators available. Um, it's important to, first of all, try and understand each other without a translator. I found that a lot of people trust each other more whenever you're talking one-on-one -on -one and trying to figure it out yourselves than just jumping to a translator. A lot of times they feel offensive and they feel useless and um, then they'll kind of shut down and stop talking to you. So I think for teaching to be most effective, we should try to find a common way to communicate through a language barrier before we jump to more extremes, but I definitely think it would be a good idea to have translators on site for, especially for common languages, like we might see Spanish, um, things, 
you know, Spanish or English. I think those are the two most common ones we see around here. Um, and for those others, I think it's important to have a way to translate if we came across something like that. Okay. So for the advantages and disadvantages of my choice for teaching, um, I definitely think that the advantage would be to be in a group and discuss everything and go over not only generally what the what PTSD is, but kind of dive into every aspect of it and discuss multiple therapies for PTSD patients and you know talk about all of it at once. I think I can't think of a whole lot of disadvantages we would have with it, but mostly I believe that. If we had disadvantages, it would be maybe the limited amount of information we have on other countries with their veterans. Um, other countries, we may not be able to find information on theirs as easily as we can find on ours. Now, when I was doing my presentation, a lot of the resources that I found were off of sites like the VA, um, the National Institute of Mental Health, things like that. We, I do have a few journals that I found, um, but a lot of the facts you can easily find on verified sites such as the National Institute of Mental Health or the VA, um, things like that. And we have a lot of patients that come in now and say you know that they're involved with the VA and I think it's very important that these patients are involved with them and that we acknowledge the VA for how helpful it has been. Um, they do quite a few studies on them and they help soldiers quite a bit. Now, the teaching, the teaching methods that I use to explain my goals and achieve them, um, I think that, sorry, I think that having an interactive audience and allowing everybody to be part of the conversation and including everybody that we can, making sure that nobody's ideas go unnoticed or any comments aren't overlooked I think that um that engages them and that maximizes education the most and I think whenever students feel that their opinions are valued and that they are allowed to talk in class and they don't feel nervous to speak up that that helps quite a bit and um, I think that contributes the most to learning whenever students are nervous and don't feel like they can speak in front of the instructor or feel like they'll be ridiculed by their peers um, I found a lot of times that that hinders learning and that hinders education. They're more nervous in those situations and they shut down a lot more often. So having an open environment where we can talk about everything um, and in include everyone, like I said in the opening, whenever we discuss everyone's experiences, I think that's important to let everybody express themselves. For my outreach tool, I used a um, brochure and in my brochure I um, explained everything that I would be doing, you know, used a kind of a loud setting. Um, I don't have a printout on me right now, but the one attached you'll see it has a loud setting, you know, saying that we want to reach out and help our veterans, that we are going to talk about the things that are there to help them. Everybody pretty much knows one. Um, and I even include, you know, snacks and drinks because I think that that's one of the main things my teachers have always included that helps us a lot is whenever there's some kind of incentive for people to come and a lot of times food and drinks is the way to get them there. And also on my PowerPoint, my PowerPoint and my brochure kind of go together. They included a lot of the same, um, issues and they include a lot of the same facts. Now for my, to measure my effectiveness in my teaching, I would use a pretest and a post test. Like in the pretest, you know, maybe a multiple choice, see if p people know how prevalent um, PTSD is in combat veterans and see what they would define it as. Um, and then after our lecture, go over 
what we talked about and see what the scores came up to. Um, and that's it. So I uh, hope you enjoy it.